Hello, welcome to Rimmer Brothers. My name is Hans and today we shall be replacing the rear discs and pads on the Range Rover Sport. But before we jack it up or do anything, we shall be loosening the locking wheel nut by hand and not with an impact wrench. Now that we've removed the wheel, we can now remove the caliper which will give us access to the brake pads. Okay, so now the first thing we need to do is to remove the brake pad wear sensor. If we gently move it up and down, we should be able to withdraw it and unclip it from the bleed nipple. With that out of the way, we can start to undo the caliper securing nuts. Now we can undo the top bolt. If we gently rock it from side to side to push the piston in, we can release the caliper, but be careful not to let it hang by the hose or it'll damage it. So we took it up out of the way, and now we can see in the calipers. Okay, now we've removed the caliper. If we look closely, we can see there's a little spring clip that belongs as part of the brake pad wearing, wearing sensor, and if we lose that clip, we shall need it to for putting it back. So we carefully put that somewhere safe and now we can remove the grip pads. Might be a little bit hard to come out if they're stuck in. This one's coming out not too bad at all. Okay now we've uh, undone the top bolt we can undo the bottom bolt. But don't remove it until you've undone the both together. Remove the two bolts and carefully lift away the carrier. Whenever renewing brake pads, it's always good to check the condition of the disc and to measure the thickness of the disc itself. Here I'm measuring the disc thickness and if it's under the manufacturer's recommended thickness, it must be replaced. It shouldn't be used. So this one's checked okay, but it's damaged and we shall replace it. Okay, first of all, we re remove this countersunk with securing screw and then we rotate the disc and drum assembly till that little inspection hole is at about 11 o'clock and if we look down the hole we shall see this little knurled wheel which I'll show you later but we have to release that to release the handbrake and then this will take a bit of coming off and you'll have to tap with a hammer it might be corroded on a little bit but it should pull off. Like so. To get the disc off, first of all we have to release the handbrake shoes and if we remove this little plastic inspection cover in the disc we can uh, see that's where we access with a screwdriver. With the disc removed we put the screwdriver through the hole and on this thumbed wheel we can then turn it step by step until the handbrake shoes are in the fully retracted position. Now we have a good chance of getting the disc and drum off. You may have trouble removing the disc and you don't know why it wants to come off. There's a, a really big rust ring that occurs on the outer edge and this is what holds on the back of these shoes and uh, it's really hard to get off sometimes. So you need perseverance and uh, patience, but it will come off. Now we check the handbrake shoes to make sure that they're not worn out, and that the linings haven't just started to came off the actual back plates. So we use a small pick and we look for any areas where it might be lifting off and check to see. And these absolutely appear to be fine, just need a good clean up to get the rust off. So we brush these for a couple of minutes just to clean them up. I'm using some heavy duty scotch bright. Okay, so we've got the new disc out of the packet. First job is to make sure it's thoroughly degreased and using brake cleaner and blue rag we are wiping all the protective coating out the inside where the handbrake shoes go and the hub surface 
and the inside of the disc. You must get all the oil and contaminants off so it's lovely and clean. No. First job is to make sure that the knurled adjusting screw is fully retracted on the adjuster so the shoes are fully home and also to make sure the hub's cleaned of oil, grease and rust so there's nothing to get trapped between the disc and the hub. And then we look for the countersunk hole for the grub screw and line it up with the threaded hole at the bottom. Fit the disc on and fit the retaining screw. And then we tie that up to the recommended torque setting. OK, next job is to adjust the handbrake shoes. So we find the inspection hole, turn it round to about 11 o'clock, find the little knurled nut in the hole, and then we can insert the screwdriver and step, tighten it up until the shoes lock in the drum. That's nice and locked now, we can undo it. One, two, three, four, five. About six turns on the little nail nut. Okay, now we've got the carrier. Before we can put new shoes or bolt it back to the vehicle, we need to remove these and then clean all the corrosion that's in the slots that hold the brake pads. Same with the bottom side. You can see they all need cleaning out, otherwise they'll trap and cause the pads not to move freely. Also, check the sliders. The rubber boots must be no holes in them and move freely up and down. If required you can pop out and put new grease but these look absolutely fine. Okay it's important we clean out all the dust and corrosion from these grooves so we'll scrape the rust out. See there's a lot more corrosion on this side than this side. Once we've done that. Okay, now we need to uh, put some copper grease onto the areas we've cleaned. And we can fit the new new parts. Right, that's ready for refitting. Okay, so now we clean the outer face of the disc with a brake cleaner. Get rid of all the oil and protective film. Fitting the new carrier, we line up the holes and insert the bolts. After fitting both bolts, we tighten them up to the recommended torque setting. OK, so we've applied some copper grease onto both ends and been careful not to get any on the pad material. And we insert it. And Fit it like so. The other side's just the same. Careful, put some grease on, not getting it anywhere else. And those are both fitted nicely and they move freely in the carrier. Now we can fit the caliper. Now we need to compress the piston back into the brake caliper. Before we do that, we must check the brake fluid level to make sure that when the piston goes back in the fluid doesn't overflow and make a mess all over everywhere else. I've previously done that so I can quite happily, using a G clamp, compress the piston back inside the caliper. It should push up nice and evenly. Check the dust seal to make sure there's no tears or rips and slowly compress it till it hits the stop. Now 
and remove the G-clamp. OK, so now we're ready to refit the caliper. If we do use any copper slip, we mustn't apply any on here because any oil will damage the rubber boot, making it swell and then it'll cause it to leak. So I'm not going to apply any copper grease to that face there and fit it dry. Using the new screws provided, And then we just tighten them up to the right dog setting. OK, so now we need to fit the brake pad sensor. The little spring I mentioned earlier needs to be fitted onto there and without it falling off, inserted into the brake pad. Like so, and it will be nice and firm once it's in position. Then just took the wire under the brake nipple, nipple cover and that should be secured there. Before fitting the wheel back just clean up the hub and put, put some grease on so that the wheel doesn't get attached with water and corrosion on the hub. Don't need to put much on, just a little smear. Refit the wheel, torque up the uh, wheel nuts and then press the brake pedal a few times just to get the brake pads to touch the disc and then repeat the process with the other side. Well, that's how to change the rear discs and pads on a Range Rover Sport. My name's Hans and I hope you enjoyed the video with the Rimmer Brothers.